what happens when technology turns against you? Is technology still our friend? Is it our foe? And how do you take down the machine? Hello everyone and welcome back to Married with Comics. I'm your host, Laura. Now, thank you all so much for your continued support. We are still growing and we're getting closer and closer to that thousand subscriber giveaway. Yes, there will be something incredible available, but the only way to qualify for those giveaways is if you are commenting on multiple videos. So please continue to comment, like, and share, and of course, subscribe. We have some incredible content coming this month and next month you're going to absolutely love it. Stay tuned. I have some great things up my sleeve. Now, one of the things that I wanted to start doing with this channel is talking about truly independent titles. Now, for instance, when people hear independent titles, they think about Image, Boom, and Dark Horse. However, in the big scale of things, when you're looking at independent publishing companies, those three are actually really big. There are smaller independent publishing companies that still produce content. The question that I really wanted to pursue is whether these much, much smaller independent publishing companies are creating similar content that's just as good as some of the ones that we know, like something is killing the children, or is this just a good start? Now, the company that we're going to talk about today is Magnetic Press. They were founded in 2013, and in their first four years of being created, they had 17 Eisner nominations, and they've already won a Golden Medal of Excellence for their title, Love the Fox. What they do best is they take an international repertoire of titles and creators and artists, and they take, for instance, a title that has never been translated into English, and they will then take that famous series and make it available to an English speaking audience. And then they also take creators from around the world that are either brand new or well established. And then they are letting them create new worlds, new series. And you will see a ton of absolutely unique content. The challenge that I ran into is there are so many great titles that are available and I was on a budget and I didn't want to buy a ton of different books knowing that I may not enjoy it. So on the main page, there is a contact us section. And I decided to reach out to the company just to get their opinion before I made my first purchase. I also wanted to get an idea for you all what it's like as a customer when you do reach out to this company. Do they even respond? Because I've had multiple that do not. I reached out to them and said, listen, I want to make sure I'm grabbing the right titles. What do you recommend? This is what I like to read. The title that I really wanted to grab is actually the one they told me is coming out on a Kickstarter this month or next month. So I will be talking more about that definitely when I back the Kickstarter and when the book arrives. Because that title was going to be out on a Kickstarter, they did have some other recommendations. However, one of the titles that they absolutely encouraged me to get was Monolith. Now, this is the sort of generic retail release, there is a Kickstarter exclusive cover that is stunning. I really liked that other cover, but one of the things that's different about the two covers is this one, of course, is showing the daytime main character versus the, the monolith car. And then on the back, you have the nighttime image. With the Kickstarter exclusive, you have the nighttime image on the front and the back, which does kind of tie it together. For me, I actually like that you have daytime and nighttime just to show the extent of the struggle of this character visually before you even open the book. Now, this series was created by three incredible Italians. So we have the writer who is Roberto Reccioni and the gentleman who also helped with the script is Mauro Uzeo and the artist who's also the production designer for not only this book, but for the upcoming movie monolith is Lorenzo Cicchetti. Now, you will see, of course, on everything here, it spells out Lorenzo's name as L-R-N-Z. It's his abbreviation, his full name, obviously, Lorenzo. One of the things that I really like about this is that Roberto does a fantastic job in this series, giving sort of an introduction and then a 
kind of a final statement at the end. And as soon as you start that introduction, you're kind of drawn into the series to figure out what it was that he created and he knew as a writer in that very moment, this series that practically popped off the page. Now, I've talked to you all about Jeff Lemire series where Jeff Lemire is known for sometimes choosing whether he wants to fill a page with dialogue and soliloquies, and there are sometimes where it's mostly art. And this series is definitely mostly art driven, but that again is intentional because it's allowing you to get kind of absorbed into the action and the emotions of what's going on without having that additional distraction of, and then I was scared, kind of interior monologue, which normally you'd think that I would be all about, I want the monologue, I want the character development. However, what was going on in these scenes was so riveting that I didn't need it. The art just pulls you in from the very beginning. And I love that. So with this series, we have technically four characters. We have Sandra, who is our main character, and she is sadly a little bit textbook in her situation. She has a husband, Carl, who is controlling. And she responds, as anyone does who's been stuck in a controlling situation, is she starts to rebel. The more she starts to rebel and act out and do things that are stupid and have consequences, the more Carl tries to control and to watch and make sure that she doesn't step out and she doesn't do something dumb. And that makes her act out even more. So the two of them are stuck in this very dysfunctional cycle. And at the very beginning of the story, she's just, she can't take it anymore. And she's trying to leave and she's just going to take her son, David, and they're going to go. And she's not going to tell Carl when she's getting back. She's not telling him where she's going. She just needs to get out. Perfectly understandable. Carl, on the other hand, who is very protective, very controlling, of course, has purchased this fourth character, the monolith car. The monolith car is supposed to be everything all in one. It is a vehicle that, of course, has all the latest tech gadgets, can drive on its own, navigate, etc. You've got a main computer, you know, identity that will speak to you. And, of course, it cannot be destroyed. So Carl has purchased this to keep his wife and son safe while also keeping tabs on them. So he convinces Sandra that if she's going to go, he wants to make sure that she is going to be protected. And so she, he convinces her to take the monolith on this journey into God only knows where. She heads out into the desert and there is something that happens, of course, where she then has to get out of the car. And while she's out of the car, something happens. And now she needs to get back into the car where her son, David, is. And now it's this journey and this internal struggle to find the strength when you know that she's, she's facing all these elements kind of outside the car, whether it's heat, no water, animals, other things are going on. And then, of course, there's that part of you that just wants to give up. So you see her fighting all of this just to get to her son, who is literally on the other side of the glass, just staring at her, asking for mommy to come, to come save him. So that struggle, it's very real. It's very moving. And every single moment up to that point was already riveting. And then as she's trying to find ways to get into the car, and she's facing all these other things. And she's just trying to find the courage to get to that next point. You do have some really cool flashbacks of kind of building these characters. And every single moment just adds to the tension. And I absolutely loved it. I finished this in one sitting happily. The one thing that I will say. When you read this, down in the comment section put spoiler alert, then I want to hear from you all. There's one final panel where it is not conclusive what has happened in the end of this story. And I want to know what conclusion you all took from it. 
it could be just like Inception where, you know, you see the little top spinning and does it wobble or does it stay straight? It's one of those moments where it makes it debatable. The fact that this could be interpreted one way or the other is most of the reason that I absolutely loved the ending of this story. If they had defined it all and they had tied everything up in a pretty little bow, I think that they would have missed a huge opportunity. The other thing that I will say is because of the nature of the art in this story, which again is why I'm glad, you know, we have this humongous book to be able to flip through. It, it makes you, it almost feel like you could jump into the story. This story was originally optioned for film. And then they decided to make it into a graphic novel, and then the film ended up going forward. But the way that this is written, you can almost feel that production value to it. So I can't wait to see what they do when they kind of transform this into a film. Because of course they're probably going to add a couple more characters, they're going to add some more complications to the storyline. But I know a lot of the elements are going to be the very same because the same artists and writers are involved. This was a fantastic first story for me. I absolutely loved it, and I can't wait to check out my next Magnetic Press title. I will definitely be back for more. It is a very quick read, but I will say it's one I will go back and reread again. And I definitely recommend. So my huge questions for you all is, have you read any Magnetic Press titles before? Have you checked out Monolith? And is there a, what I consider a truly independent company that you have read other titles written by that you want me to check out? Bring on your recommendations because I have a couple more titles that I've already grabbed in advance. And then I'm hoping to check out some other incredible titles. And I'd love to make sure some of them are ones that you all recommend. Have a great day, everyone. Mm -hmm.